One. Hey, everybody. I'm live. Miss V is live, and I got some natural light. It's a rotate device. I don't know what that means. I'm going to put me some loop gloss on, though. I got a dog tree haul for y'all. I had to do my live at 4 o'clock so I can have some natural light. Because it's dark at 5. He's saying rotate device. Hold on. I don't know what this thing ain't talking about. All right, I'm live. Keep saying rotate the device. I don't know what they're talking about. Let me see what this is. Hey, Miss Brown. I'm going to call you. I've been busy, baby. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm doing. I ain't been live in so long. My, thing, my um, phone saying rotate the device. So, I don't know who this. Hey, Rebecca Copeland from, um, Becky from Miami. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all ready for this Dollar Tree haul? I'm gonna have to go live more often so I can actually understand what I'm doing. Wendy. Hey. Rebecca, how you doing? You ready for this Dollar Tree haul? Okay. I'm just going to go and get into the haul. It's hard looking at um the screen because it my device saying rotate the device, but I can't rotate it. So, hello to everyone who's joining me. I got to turn my head this way. Hey, Brown, hit the... Just hit the what? Brown eyes on a budget. I need you to help me. Can you be a moderator for me? Because I don't know what I'm doing. Just hit the like. You telling everybody to hit the like? Anyway, I'm going to go and get into the Dollar Tree Hall. I don't have about an hour. First off, dog, oh, I wish I would have gotten out of the car. I'll do that on the next video. Anyway, let me go ahead and do my Dollar Tree Hall. No particular order. I'm just going to grab stuff because I got a large amount of stuff. But anyway, hey, everybody, as y'all come on, hello, hello, hello. Miss V is here. I got some light. I'm so happy to have some light. Let me open the blinds all up. Hold on. I don't know why it's saying rotate the device. I'm scared to hit the button because it might mess up something. It's saying rotate the device. I'm going to hit the little thing, y'all. That didn't do it. It's saying I ain't got but two people in here. Anyway, I'm finna do my haul. Because I know everybody got children and y'all got stuff to do. So I decided to do me a live um, Dollar Tree haul. Since I had um, been live in a while and I was getting a Dollar Tree haul together, I decided to just go live. So I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all some items. I found this um, cute little acrylic tray that says hello and it has a um, pineapple on it. It's cute. So I can use it on my little beauty table. And I got two of these Final Touches Jumbo Dryer Sheets. Y'all still there? Two people. Say I got two people in the screen. In the stream. Anyway, you can go back and watch it later. So I purchased two of these. Got me some mascara. Okay, thank you, Miss Brown. She ain't class, but she listening to me. Y'all some dedicated. I promise. I just love y'all. I can't wait to get to meet y'all one day. Everybody. Y'all know that's one of my um things I've added to my bucket list list. Before I die, I would like to visit all 50 states. My granddaughter gave me that idea because she said. This this one of her goals she want to do before she's 25. So I decided that's what I want to do. So that's one of my goals. And as that is one of my goals, then I guess I can do a meet and greet in every state one day. So that's my goal. Hey, y'all. Here goes some mascara I got from Wet and Wild. 
I know y'all seen this at the Dollar Tree, but I needed another mascara. Got that. And I'm going to try this Argan Oil and Avocado Facial Wipes. I tried the Argan Oil and the one that's in the brown pack. I love those, but they didn't have any, so I'm going to try this one. If y'all have tried any these products, please let me know. And as y'all know, I um, decorate badge holders. And guess what I found to decorate my badge holder? These magnets. I'm going to take the magnet off the back of it and just glue the um, design right onto the badge holder. I think I've done this before, but they have a count of five. So these are the ones. First ones I picked up. This is like spring colors. And y'all know I, I have an Etsy store. So I'll put this in my Etsy store. And here is another color. Salty but sweet. 99% mermaid, 1% unicorn. Imagine, dream, believe, and always. This cute. Are y'all? Do y'all see me? Good. That's what I want to know because I can't tell because it has this um, message on my phone that says rotate device. So somebody let me know if, if you see a clear picture of Miss V. Do you see me good? Uh, yes, and I see you. You're just sideways. I know. That's what it keeps saying. Rotate the device. Okay, let me hit. Let me see if I can figure out how to rotate it. I got the device locked. Let's try it. Oh, that didn't do it. Y'all looking at my beauty. I don't know how to um, rotate it, y'all. Do anybody know how to help me to rotate it? That's what happens when you don't go live often. That's what happens. <sighs> Unless I get the phone and just hold it. But that's going to be too much of a hassle. It used to have the little icon. <laughs> it usually has a button to rotate. I know. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at y'all. Look, y'all. can y'all see me? <laughs> I got an um, Android. So, I got an Android, Miss Brown. <laughs> Y'all funny. Well, I don't know what to do. I don't want to hit the X. I know what the X mean up there. It said I got four people in the stream. Y'all looking at me sideways. So, am I, am I still sideways? <laughs> hey Rebecca, thank you. It's okay. We see you. Y'all just want to haul. I know that's right. That's what I'm talking about. Brown eyes on the budget. That's what I be saying. Y'all don't worry about the quality. Just, just get the content. Let's just get the content, y'all. I maybe I can figure out what I did wrong later. Okay, and here goes some more magnets. Oh, I showed y'all the um these are the um unicorn magnets that I'm gonna use to decorate my badge holder with. I think they're cute. And these are cute. Here's some more magnets. I thought it was good. Five magnets for um a dollar. And these are cute. Smile every day. Make your dreams happen. Just inspirational spring type magnets. That's cute. And if y'all see my video, I, I made some badge holders with these pretty acrylic. Flowers. I found some more. Yay! I found two more. These are pretty. So I got a total of four. And I found some more of these puffy stickers. Has the cherries, pineapple, grapes, and just a flower. And here go some stickers for the summer. There's a surfboard on there, some palm trees, all kind of summery things. Hey, Marie, how you doing? I just watched your video on um, What's in a Name. That was a touching video. I've been there before. I've experienced racism, so I understand. We're just going to keep praying, and we're going to just try to do the best we can. Mm. But anyway... These are just some um, dishcloths, two dishcloths. I need some more dishcloths, y'all. 
Just your standard stuff at the Dollar Tree. Got some cotton rounds. Hey, everybody. Anybody that I had spoken to? Hello, hello, hello. I got me some gum to keep in my purse. And there was a good deal on these double seal um glazed sandwich bags. It normally has um 22 in here. They have a, um seven bonus bags, 29 in here. The zipper bags by Glade. And then I got the 22 count in the snack bags. And I found this nice little vase. I have never seen one shaped quite like this in our Dollar Tree. I got this for a DIY. And then I got this um candle platter. I'm trying to make my own clothes, y'all. I'm gonna go get me a little um nub from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna make my own clothes. That's that. And the new item that I that I hadn't seen in my Dollar Tree with this cute um Valentine's Day heart shaped um chalkboard sign. Have y'all seen this in y'all Dollar Tree? This is my first time seeing this one in my Dollar Tree. So I thought that was cute. Y'all know what I'm writing now. God is love. And look at this cute container I found. A lunch storage tower. It has two compartments to it. And you can unscrew the top off this one. So I can put me like some grapes or something on this end. And maybe some. Well, this has a little dipping cup. I didn't see that. I can do a little dipping cup. Oh, this one has a little dipping cup. And so I could just put whatever in there. Whatever kind of snacks in there. I thought that was neat. And this goes together like that. And it and it screws and it has a tight fit. It don't feel cheap or anything. It has a snug um attachment when you um hook it back up. I thought that was cute. They had all colors, red, blue, whatever color you want, black. You got the worst Dollar Tree in Georgia? I can't believe it. I have three different ones that I visit. And what else I have? Oh, I, you know it's springtime. I got, well, I got these are roses. Pretty color roses. Got me some of the um, peanut butter cookies that I like. And I know everybody been hauling these pillows. I finally got me two. I'm going to do a DIY with these pillows. Stay tuned, y'all. DIY coming soon. Or should I be doing it like this, y'all? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, Miss um, Kimberly Davis, Diva De Designing on a Dime. How are you? I'm so happy y'all came to see Miss V. Got the Dollar Tree haul. Okay. I'm going to do a DIY with these pillows. Y'all stay tuned. And y'all going to wonder why I did this. I bought another one of these. Guess what? I'm going to do a DIY with this too. I seen this lady make a shelf with these. Her name is um, um, Emma Reels DIYs. Y'all just wait till y'all see it. Y'all probably can't envision it right now. But just wait. DIY coming soon. Make sure I give her all the credit because it was not my idea. Hey, y'all. I can't see what y'all saying, but hey, hey, hey. I'm just so glad to have light. I'm trying to hurry and get this haul done because it's getting dark here. We were supposed to have some snow um, here in Alabama. We were supposed to have one to four inches of snow, y'all. Guess what? It didn't do nothing. They closed schools down in the year time. So they just got a free day off. So this is these are going to be part of the shelf, but I go ahead and show them to you. I'm sure y'all have seen them. These um, plaques. Love the wine you're with. And this one said, wine because no great story ever started with someone eating a salad. <laughs> and I got that. So those are for DIYs also. And I was looking for my pledge um, furniture polish and couldn't find it. So I just picked this up, some furniture polish. 
And I just got the standard um dish towels. Bum B DIY, she live in California. Did y'all see those beautiful dish towels she found at her local Dollar Tree that had the uh, rolling pin on it? And the, I think it had, uh, I'm not sure if it had the cheese grater on it, but those were some cute towels, but our Dollar Tree has not had them yet. So I just got this to the normal towels at uh, the Dollar Tree with the wine on it, wine bottle and a glass of wine. And I just got me some more uh, pot holders. Oh, well, as you can see, Miss uh, Marie, don't don't go by my video because I don't thank you, brown eyes on the budget, because I don't know how to go live either. It don't look like it. I'm sideways, y'all say. So we're gonna work it out together. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna figure out what I did wrong because I've gone live before, but this is my first time being sideways. And I found these beautiful um picture frames. They're in a silver color. I got four of them. Got these for a DIY. Everything is for a DIY. As y'all know, um, we're gonna be doing some five dollar DIYs monthly on these channels. This is a photo frame card for a photo. It's like a shadow box, and you can hang up. A photo in there. It's similar to these other little um, frame I got from the Dollar Tree a while back. That one has a little clip on it. And this one, you can just hang a picture inside. And I got these beautiful uh, pictures for my kitchen. Be grateful. I thought that was cute. And this one has the seasoning rosemary. I like the colors in it. And this one has the seasoning basil. And this one says, eat well, pray often, and love always. Now, y'all know I love that one. So I thought these were some cute um, pictures I could put in my kitchen. And last but not least, I just got some white dishes from the Dollar Tree. I think that's it. I'm looking around, making sure. I'm sure anyway, I got the white dishes. The I just got two plate settings since it's only me and my husband. I'm going show it to y'all. Show y'all one whole plate setting. I hope y'all having a good day. I am. I worked last night. I worked the night shift for some overtime. And this is the place set. So we're going to be doing some $5 DIYs monthly here in this um, YouTube community that I'm in. So I just went ahead and bought a, a lot of items that I thought I would use for DIYs so I won't have to run out at the last minute trying to pick up items. I already have them in my house. You know, the way I work. I ain't going to have time to be just running to the dog tree. But this is the place set that I got. I already had one of these plates, but I've never seen the square bowl and the square um, salsa. It's my first time seeing them at the Dollar Tree. So I got two of those plates in. And that's it. We can just chit chat. I want to stay on here about an hour. I really want to try to um, start doing more lives because I really don't have time for all the editing and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it this way and see if that'll help. Is that better? Hey, London, you at work? Am I still um sideways, y'all? I came on a little early. I came on about five minutes to four. Oh, I'm not sideways anymore. Okay, well, I just should have held it like this. Okay. I'm upright, so I should have held it like this. But how am I holding it like that if it, if the um phone is on a um tripod? So I don't know. You can't see my face. Anyway, I'm sitting in my craft room. 
Beautiful. Y'all remember those um <laughs> y'all remember them cookies we used to eat when we were younger, those um I'm really close. Oh. What are you trying to say, Marie? You don't want to look at my face. <laughs> y'all remember them um cookies called planks? I found some in the um, you remember they had the icing on top of them. I found some in the thrift store. Okay, Kim, you see me good. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. I was just kidding, trying to light your day up. But anyway, y'all remember those planks, those cookie called the plank stage planks, yes. I found some in the uh, thrift store out of all places yesterday. And I got some. I was going to eat them. Look, I was going to do y'all a stage plank mukbang. Even though I don't like eating on camera. But anyway. Did y'all see anything in my Dollar Tree haul? Y'all going to add to your wish list? I went to two different. I went to one. I went to three different Dollar Trees. It was kind of. They don't have a lot of variety, um, a lot of inventory. I saw the, <laughs> yeah, I know. I was looking around. I was like, do I want to get this from the thrift store? Then I said, oh, well, it's in the package and it looks fresh. So I went on and got it. Okay, thank you, my girls. H. I know everybody busy, but I decided to come on at four so I can have some lighting because I'm tired of putting out them dark videos. So Miss V got to get her life together, y'all. Wants to talk to you, I know, right? I was asking, do you remember those stage planks cookies that we used to eat growing up? You know, they had the icing on top. I used to like the lemon and the strawberry. I had purchased them from the thrift store, and I was going to um, show them to y'all on this video, but I left them in the car. Miss Marie, tell um, your husband it's Miss V time to spend quality time. Um, with you, he have you all the time. I know. I can't wait till the time change too, um, Miss Kim. Oh, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out this technology stuff, y'all. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Michelle, how you doing? Hope you're feeling better. Well, y'all, yeah, I'm loving the YouTube community. Um, I refuse to change my content, people. I mean, if I don't give it one view, I don't give it one view, but I'm not going to, um, uh oh. I'm not going to change my content. Good. I'm glad you're feeling good. Feeling better. I'm not going to change my content. I notice a lot of people change their content. Baby, you know, people just sell their soul. I don't know why. I don't know. I, I'm not even going to say that because. If you just don't believe in God, you just don't believe in God. And I, I, I can't do nothing about that. But I, don't, I just don't understand why a person feel like they got to change their content to do things that they know they don't have any business doing, talking about other people and different things just to get some views. Why don't you just have faith in God and just do what's right? I don't understand. Hey, boy in the book, Shelly, how you doing? I'm not going to change mine, baby. If I just have one person come on here, that's fine with me. I mean, because God is my provider anyway, whether you get the views or not. All right, brown eyes on the bus. Don't sell your soul. No, we're going to stay true. They just want fame and fortune, but what they don't realize it's not going to last because it's... <sighs> I wish I could say the things I be wanting to say, but I don't know how to word it just right where y'all can understand. You know, it's in my head, but I can't get it. <laughs> I I have trouble interpreting really what I want to say. I, want, I don't want to just say it. You know, I want to say it where it makes sense and where it's relevant to somebody. You know what I'm saying? I just... <sighs> but one thing I have not done, I have not unsubscribed to anybody. What I will do is unclick the bell where I won't get the notification. Now, I will do that. But I have not unclicked to anybody. Any, unsubscribed to anybody. Now, I have not done that. I just don't watch their videos. It's just crazy. Because you can tell the people that are fake. It's awful. But anyway, I don't have no control over that. All I can do is do what I'm going to do on my channel and just pray 
that someone it it inspires someone to do the same maybe but you know i don't even watch the news i stopped watching the news about eight years ago because all you see on the news is such and such got killed or such and such robbed the bank but then even though robbing the bank is bad this may have been that person first encounter they'll take a mug shot from when he was looking he or she was looking terrible and just make it look so bad. You know what I'm saying? I believe in second chances, you know, but the media is awful. But anyway, that's why I try to put out positive videos. That's why I try to make sure I have fun to kind of balance it out. Because if I just sit and think about certain things that I have gone through in life, man, I would be in a deep depression. Don't you know that? Mm. Again, yeah. You right. It don't have to be a Bible study for you to mention anything about God, baby. Miss my girl's H. Because that's um the basis. That's this um basis of my channel. Anything about pertaining to God, you don't have to you don't have to feel like you can't say anything about God on my channel. It don't have to be Bible study for us to talk about God. All right, Miss um, Michelle, thank you. I'm glad I'm inspiring you. I mean, because this, this, ooh. anyway, we're going to keep this positive. We're going to keep this positive. This is what we're going to do. I got my Dollar Tree haul. I got to put all this stuff up. I was sideways, and now I'm upright. So we're going to focus on that. <laughs> but anyway, I hope everybody doing good. I just want to come on here and live, y'all. I'm almost, I'm almost, I almost have my watch time. I really appreciate y'all, and I'm going to put, my watch, the money that I received from the proceeds, I'm calling on things as though they are. I'm talking like I already have it. You got to believe that you already have it. Like you got to believe that you already healed. Like this lady told me in the emergency room, she said, yeah, the doctor said I have multiple sclerosis, but I'm going to do what the doctor say until my healing comes. I said, that's what I'm talking about, baby. That's what I'm talking about. She said she's going to do what the doctor say do because God put the doctors here on earth. He put this medicine on earth. She said, until our healing comes. I said, you heal just from saying it. I thought that was great that she said it. I thought that was great. But yeah. And um, I met some positive people. And you know. Having your health. It is wonderful. Yes it is. And we got to be thankful for having our health. For those of us. You know who the doctor has given us a diagnosis. Remember that God has to. God has the final say so. I'm not, I'm not making light of anybody being sick. Because I do realize their sickness. But remember that God has the last say. So I work in the hospital. I've been in the hospital 15 years. I remember this young guy. He came in with pancreatic, pancreatic cancer. Pancreas had eaten his pancreas up. So he had some other issues going on. The doctors had gave him up. Had gave him up, you know, told the mama to take him home on hospital. This guy was like 38 years old. Baby, that mama, that was a praying woman. That woman told her. He, she didn't disrespect the doctor. She said, I appreciate everything y'all doing. I appreciate, you know, you sharing your knowledge with me. But she said, no, my son will not die. And he, he is healed in the name of Jesus. And you already know that people going to look at you crazy when you say something about God and saying that you healed in the name of Jesus after the doctor gave you this diagnosis. Baby, that was a praying woman. She came to the hospital every day, prayed over her son or whatever. How about he walked out of there? How about he walked out that hospital and then came back to see us? Came back to see us. I guess just to show the doctor that God is a healer. Baby, we were crying. Because, I mean, I, could, I, I already knew it when she said it. Because I was just like, everybody was talking about, that woman crazy, such and such, such and such. Y'all already know people think we're crazy because we believe in God. He, he not already uh, warned us of this. Anyway, baby, how about that man walked out there and was fine? Was fine. That was a praying woman. He went to rehab. Now, it was a long struggle now. He stayed in the hospital about six months. But God healed him. So I came on here to tell y'all, you all, I'm going to say y'all, I'm country. I ain't going to try to talk no certain way. Y'all, you, apostrophe, LL, you all, <laughs> just to hold on to your faith. God is faith. If he can heal the lady with the issue of blood for 27 years, he can heal you. He did it before. He can do it again. See, that we started out with a Dollar Tree haul, and I, and now, 
I'm witnessing to y'all and encouraging y'all. So just whatever God want to do, you know. When I made that statement to, when I made the statement to God, my pastor told me, be careful when you say this, God, to use you. Whenever, use me. I told him to use me to help glorify his name. And that's what he doing. So, you know, I just want to tell y'all the testimony. And that happened about five years ago. I never for everybody in the hospital remember that guy. Here. And you know, you know, the medical people, they're going to try to come up with a reason why he's still living. Well, maybe such and such. Now, they just didn't want to give God the credit. But baby, I said, y'all got to give it to him because he already got the credit. You don't have to give God the credit. He already has the credit. Baby, when that boy walked out that hospital. Baby, you talking some crying people. I think people who didn't even believe in God was crying. Yes, he is. He's the author and the finisher, baby. So whatever the doctor tell you, it's, I mean, listen to what he say. If he says you had diabetes or whatever, just listen to what he say. Do what the doctor said. Do what you're supposed to do down here on earth. And God will heal you. Yes, he will. Now, I've seen some folks, you know, be diagnosed or something. I ain't taking no medicine such and such. I said, now, nah, I don't know about that part. I got to do some more research on it now. It may be that type, type of faith. I ain't saying they wrong, because I don't know. They may have that type of faith not to take milk. But I do believe that you should, you know, um, take your medicine or whatever for whatever your diagnosis is. Because I think taking your medicine is a form of you having faith that God is going to heal you. That's what I believe. Good night, Shelly. Thank you for coming by. Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all stopping by because I know everybody busy. I wish I, baby, I ain't got nothing to show. Let me show y'all this list of people I got to go see here on YouTube. And y'all know when I come to y'all channel, I don't just come to your channel and click a button. I support your channel. That's why it takes me so long to get to your channel. Y'all remember this is my um planner for my YouTube for my YouTube um videos. I got this from. God healed me and he gave me the strength to be able to walk. Yes, he did. To go back to school, to get my... Good, don't make me run. Baby, my crap, my crap room ain't big enough. Y'all know that my praying room, no. Michelle, don't start me to run around here. I've been to tub all this stuff from Dollar Tree. Because <laughs> I ain't ashamed to pray them, baby. I'm telling you. Right? And it ain't no it, it ain't no game, baby, because I do not play. But anyway, <laughs> hallelujah. Y'all going to maybe cut this thing off in a minute. Michelle Casey Detox. Girl, gonna, you going to send me that in an email because I, I, I got to get myself together. Because when you told that testimony on your channel, I already knew. But it's just, it's just reviving just to hear people actually say it and give God the credit. You know, I already know he's a healer. But, you know, when, it, when you actually see somebody that um, gives God the credit, that's what I be happy about. I don't be so much happy about, you know, the fact that he healed because I knew he was going to heal you because, you know, nine times out of ten, I already knew what I prayed, knew what you prayed. I'd be just happy. I'd be praising the fact that, that people are giving God the praise. That's what I'd be so happy about. That's what I'd be so happy. Baby, I've been told this. Baby, I've been told this whole room. Of, <laughs> I, thought I, I was looking on my life the other day. I said, now, God. Have y'all ever been in a situation where you know, you knew for a fact you were wrong or you knew for a fact you might have did something you weren't supposed to do and God worked it out in your face? <laughs> Baby, I was thinking about that the other day. You know, sometimes I'm talking about it on YouTube, but I'm just saying. Woo, I'm just saying. But anyway, since I got y'all on here, let me tell y'all what happened to me. I'm up on the sixth floor at the hospital, minding my own bit now. I believe in God, but... You know, of course, I don't just go talking about religion and politics and stuff at work because, you know, you can't do that at work. So, you know, I don't just go around. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. I believe I don't, I don't do all that. I just let my light, let his light shine through me, do my work, try to be cordial to people. I have days where I say stuff I ain't supposed to say. You know, I'm still human. So anyway, I'm sitting up on six. We we have these carts that we push around with a laptop on the chart as we get our patient their treatments and do therapy. I'm standing at the desk talking to the unit clerk. Just charting. Okay, let me bag up. I got to bag up, y'all. I was in ICU doing the same thing, standing at the chart. This young man, working the cafeteria, he passed by me. He said, you know Jesus ain't real. <clears throat> I'm just typing. I ain't saying that. I said, okay. Is that what you believe? Is that what you believe? I mean, he real to me. So I ain't had nothing. I ain't had no reason to say that to him. I ain't saying that. Two weeks later, that same guy. 
I'm up on sixth floor. Mind my own business now, Titan. He come again. I ain't never said nothing to this guy. Nothing about God. Never since I've been working there. He paid by me. He stopped this time. He said, you know Jesus ain't real. I said, what you mean? He said, you know Jesus ain't real. I said, he ain't real to you. He said, no, Jesus ain't real. He said, ain't no way in the world. The Holy Spirit then impregnated Mary and she had a baby. I said, okay. So you don't believe in Jesus. I said, so I said, so who do you believe? He said, I believe in God, but I don't believe in Jesus. He don't believe in Jesus. I said, okay. So I'm just standing there. I was saying to myself, I said, nah. I ain't finna give all my good knowledge to this dude. I'm not finna be just, you know, I'm not finna catch my, uh, what the Bible said, don't catch your pearls to swine. I ain't just finna give him all my good knowledge if he ain't ready to receive. So some just said, just start asking him some questions. So. I said, um, why you say it ain't real? He said, so he told me, you know, ain't no way in the world the Holy Spirit and, you know, in the natural sense. I said, well, in the natural sense, you're not going to believe it. I said, it's a spiritual thing. It's something that you believe spiritually. So he just kept talking. Well, you know, asking all the questions. Well, if God, if, if Jesus is real, why he did such a, why you got so many homeless people? Why so many such, you know, just, just saying stuff. And for some reason, I could never get a good rhythm. Like, I could never just. I didn't really feel comfortable just talking to him because it was like he was making excuses. He wasn't really searching for the truth. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, I ain't going to give you all my good knowledge. Hey, y'all ain't hit that like button. I ain't got no likes on here. Can y'all hit the like button for me? I got six people in here. Can I get six likes? I remember that from the live. I remember that for some likes. Y'all say y'all like my story. Let me see. Can I get a like up there? Yeah, um, Kiki, can you hit that like for me since you say you like my story? No, I ain't finna catch my pearls, no swine. Anyway, but I could tell. Thank you. You hit it. Thank you, baby. But I could tell my spirit told me he, he wants to know the truth, but he don't know how to go about asking for it. Because to me, I was thinking to myself, what was the purpose of him telling me he don't believe in Jesus? Okay, if you don't believe in Jesus, why are you telling me? So I was thinking, because he wants to believe in Jesus. Because that's the reason. So what, what was it? Okay, so y'all tell me. What was the purpose of him walking past me? I ain't never said nothing to this man a day in his life about God, no kind of religion, nothing. What was the purpose of him walking past me telling me he don't believe in Jesus? Do y'all think he was searching for the truth? I think he would. And so y'all know Miss V. I said a few things to him. I tried to reel him back in, but he wasn't really, he, he was still... He wanted to know the truth and didn't know how to get about it. Yeah, that's what I just said. That's what I believe. Because there was no reason for him to tell me he don't believe in Jesus. Out of all the people that work in that hospital, why he walk past me? Hey, Miss Chris's world, how you doing? Um, Why he walk past me and tell me he ain't believe in Jesus? So, you know, I said a few things to him, but he knew. And then he said, I ain't read the Bible in 14 years. I said, baby, I, I, I can see that you... I can see that you ain't read Bible in 14 years that, with that crazy stuff you saying. So anyway, he just kept talking, just kept talking. A couple of people passed by and they were looking like, why are you, you know, entertaining this foolishness? But I, I, I wasn't going to show him away because he's searching. But I didn't know how. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know how because he kind of came at me. I wasn't ready for it. So I said, Holy Spirit, just let me give him something so he could remember this day. So anyway, I told him, I said, didn't you just have a beautiful baby? He said, yeah. I said, God just bless you with that beautiful baby. <clears throat> well, how you know God bless me with him? I said, okay, I'm through. I, I told the Holy Spirit, I ain't going to be able to help him. You got to do it by yourself because I can't help him. He... <laughs> I couldn't do it. So anyway, I just kind of hushed or whatever. So for another nurse, she came to him and she told him, yeah, who was out? The, she can't, the other nurse came to him and told him, he said, he said young man, she said, I used to believe the way you believe. She said, but the only thing I don't like about what you're saying is don't ridicule the people. Don't what he said, what she said, don't um ridicule the people who still who do believe in Jesus. You know, don't try to make somebody else feel bad for believing in Jesus. She she said, if you don't believe in Jesus, then you know, you don't believe in Jesus, but don't try to make somebody else feel bad for believing him. And so she asked him if she could talk to him later, but he didn't want to talk to her. He he won't talk to me. 
But anyway, I ain't say too much to him. I tried, you know, I tried to reel him back over, tried to give him a reason to believe in Jesus. You know, try I tried to get tell him a couple things that God had did for me, but he wanna understand it because he wanna question everything you say. So I said, Okay, Lord, he ain't really I ain't finna per I ain't finna catch my pearl swine because uh it took me a long time to get this knowledge and I ain't giving it to nobody who ain't ready for it. So anyway, so he went on down the hall and a couple other folks tried to talk to him, but he didn't really want to hear what they got to say. Let me show you how to um <laughs> let me show you how the Holy Spirit uh that messed them up. So anyway, every time I see him now. He'll say, you got something to say to me? I said, hey, how you doing? That's all I say. And then he said, you ain't got nothing to say to me? I said, uh-huh. Oh. He, he just want me to talk to him. I ain't, I ain't got nothing else to say. When, when the Holy Spirit give me something to say to him, I say to him. Say it to him. Okay, so I went to work the other day. I had that, remember when I had the braids in my hair. So he behind me. I'm going to my department. He behind me. talking, ooh, those are nice looking braids. I'm going to follow you. I said, baby, come on, follow me because I'm following Jesus. Baby, if y'all could have seen the expression on his face. If y'all could have seen this fresh on it fast, I thank you, Holy Spirit, because I came over that quick. Baby, he looked like he had just lost all his, like his heart had stopped beating, baby. He wasn't ready for that. I said, come on, follow me, baby, because I'm following Jesus. Baby, he was he was mad, but then he was, he was listening. So every time he see me now, he want to talk. So I'm gonna, so the Holy Spirit going to get him a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, because he wasn't ready to be on that flow, because he caught me. See, we're in the wrong place. See, I'm at work. I, I can't really talk to you like I need to. And plus, you came up on me wrong, so I ain't got nothing to say to you. So every time he see me now, he may own care. He can be in the middle of an emergency. If he see me, for some reason, he going to stop and look at me every time. And he, you guys, I say, ain't got nothing to say, but hey, how you doing? You having a good day? That's all I say to him. He wasn't ready, baby, when I told him, come on, follow me, baby. I'm following Jesus, baby. He was I was so tickled at myself. My coworker heard me say, she said, he said, um, he said, you got him. You ain't got to worry about him no more. He ain't going to say nothing else negative. But anyway, I just keep, he wasn't, he wasn't ready. You're right. He wasn't ready. <laughs> so I was like, he following me. Come on, follow me, baby. I'm following Jesus. Get on back there on that train. Choo, choo. I'm following Jesus. Come on, ride this train. We going to Jesus. <laughs> But anyway, he wasn't ready, y'all. But I'm just, I, 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 of, of course, I knew what my light that shine and why he said something to me. But he, he's searching for the truth, but he ain't really ready for the truth. That's all I know. That's all I got to say. But anyway, y'all, I was trying to show y'all my planner that my coworker gave to me. She gave it to me. It came from um, Ross. And, you know, Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plan to prosper you. And not to harm you, plans to give you hope and future, baby. So, Marie, read this scripture right here. And you are right, what you said in your video. That's what I like people who are real. Like she said, what the person said hurt her, but she's not, she don't hate them. We have to pray for these folks who despitefully use us. It's hard. Hey, Deborah Brian from Texas, how you doing? I got my 30-day debt-free um, journey video coming up the end of this month, baby. But, yeah, um, KCD Top, baby, don't be coming on my line making me cry, girl. I'm telling you, I ain't got time to be crying. I'm, I'm trying to stay focused. But, baby, the God, he is wonderful, baby. When that boy walked up out the hospital, I'm talking, we had gave him up. He was on life support and everything. They had gave him up. The doctors gave him up. Everybody gave him up. But I never did say nothing, you know, because I believed in the power of prayer. I was like, that woman ain't giving up on her child. But, baby. Anyway, what I'll tell you, I'm going to show y'all the list of people that I got to see. So, I understand when folks. So, that's why I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all when y'all stop by my channel. And then I know it's a lot of y'all. Like, a lot of y'all have told me that y'all watch my videos, you know, on the smart TV. And you can't come in. I appreciate that. The comments in tell you, you got 100 views and you got 12 comments. That means the 88 folks. One able to come in. I understand that y'all don't y'all don't have to explain it to me because I be understanding. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get all these scriptures out here. Yeah. But yeah, he was searching for the truth, y'all. Look at all these folks I gotta go see. Channels to visit. Look at that. That's just the front page, y'all. Y'all see y'all, y'all name probably ain't on there. I'll probably visit y'all. And so I highlight it once I see you. And then I put on the side how many videos I watched. Um and then that's another one. another page. So yeah, this is how I do mine. Like when people come to my videos, be like, 
Come support me. Yeah, I'm going to come support you, but I'm going to add you to the list. You're going to the bottom of the list. You're going to the bottom of the list. I got to go see my other friend. Got to go see my other friend. What? Go, Casey. That's what I'm talking about. She done paid off some bitch. She done paid off some bills watching my video. That's why I do these videos, y'all. It's not to get over here bragging about paying off no bills. Baby, I try to inspire other folks and keep myself accountable. Uh, accountable. So, I could, something can happen to me tomorrow and I don't, say I don't remember something. It's good to have a YouTube channel. I can go back and look on the YouTube channel and see where I started from. I'm just saying, y'all. But anyway, I came on here to do a haul, baby. We didn't we did got healed and everything. You don't never know what direction God's going to take you. But you know, my pastor used to always say, which is funny. He said, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plan for your life. Tell me, y'all, in the comment. Or is any of y'all life the way y'all planned it? I know mine is. I mean, it's good. But you know, we had it plan. We're going to do this when we get when we get 30. We're going to get married. We're going to have two children. We're going to have a big house. We're going to have a career. We just have all these plans. But you know what? Like my pastor said, did we ask God what plans he had for our life? Like when we go pray, like when I go pray for something. And I say, Lord, please bless me with this um promotion on my job. Uh, First of all, I should have asked God, what are your plans for me as far as the promotion? Opposed to me just going asking for a promotion. That might not be what he have in store for you. That's what I'm learning. Y'all got to learn how to pray. Woo. I'm telling y'all, when y'all pray to let his will be done and ask him to help you to accept his will, I promise you, your whole life going to be totally different. I'm telling you now. I'm telling y'all what I know. I ain't telling y'all nothing I hadn't done myself. Now, do me if you know the whole Bible from front to back? Every, probably no, I don't think no man here on earth can understand that Bible in its entirety because I think it was designed that way. Because you're going to think you know more than God. You're going to think you don't need God. Yeah, that's how you pray. I always say that, yeah, that your will will be done. One of my coworkers, he's, um, he used to be a Catholic, but now he's since changed over to Christianity. And he would ask me about praying. I said, I always end your prayer. And the, I ask these things in Jesus' name, because we can't go directly to God, because the Bible said we feel the rays in his nostril. We have to go through Jesus. That's why Jesus died for us, so we can, so he can be our intercessor. And he said he didn't know that. I said, yeah, in your prayers, in the name of Jesus. I ask these things in, in the name of Jesus. And he thanked me for that. So that's what I do, y'all. This is my prayer room right here. Did, have y'all seen that movie, The War Room? You know, at the end of the movie, when the lady told God, send me another one, another lady to um, minister to. After I end these videos, I said, send me another one, Lord. Anybody, whoever. If it ain't nothing but a way to save money on a um a flower arrangement in their house, it don't matter what it is. As long as I'm doing something to help somebody. But anyway, I told y'all God did not create us to be on here putting no 30 pictures on Instagram every day. He created us here to help other people. He created us to help other people. Hey, Mimi. I'm praying for you. Uh, um. I didn't tell God what to do as far as your channel. I went to God and, and asked him to let his will be done as far as your channel. And thank you for popping in and say hello. Tell your husband I say hello. He's a southerner like myself, so he'll understand my hello. <laughs> hey, Shelly Hassel. Hey, how y'all doing? I got 10 people in here. I'm doing good. Go on, um. My girl's age, I can't wait to meet you one day. Baby, you be all oh, those scriptures. See, I say the scriptures, but I don't be knowing exactly where it's at. I just remember that I've been read, and she come right on with the scripture. That's what I'm talking about. And you know what? The devil tried to um mess with it. But anyway, that's another video. Anyway, y'all. But yeah, God is good. Oh, what I was asking y'all, is it anyone, it's 10 people in this screen, is it anyone in this screen that Life is the way they plan. Is your life planned out the way you planned it to be? Or did God have to intervene and fix a lot of things like mine? Ooh. Yeah, I'm being home. You draw to work, London. I guess you did your car ain't out there. Then my sister Lil laughing with London. Y'all go check out her channel, baby. She love all the she uh right, okay. Is it better? Well, I'm gonna say is it it might not be better in the form that you might have had to go through some things you didn't have to go through, but is your life better? 
Marie and um, I forgot the other lady that said her, her life is not like she planned it. Anyway, God is good. But yeah, that little man, every time that little guy, every time he see me at the hospital, I'm telling y'all. Yeah, I wish y'all could, I wish y'all could have seen the expression on his face when I told him, come on, follow me, because I'm following Jesus. Oh, baby, that, that, that facial expression was priceless. My girl, she said, how you be coming up with this stuff? I said, I don't know. I just say it. When it's time to say it, I just say it. I don't know. I don't wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to say this at 3.30. I mean, I don't know how I come up with this stuff. But I was glad I told him that because I was sick of him. I got it going on today. Thank you, Kiki. I can't wait to get out to Vegas to meet you. I'm going to meet y'all. Watch. One day, we're going to go have lunch. Then we're going to do a DIY. <laughs> Woo. But anyway, I love YouTube. I, I just love the fact that you as a creator can get on here and show, share things that you know, you know, without having to go through a committee and all these people to approve you and all that. It's just it's just wonderful that you can just turn on a camera and just tell somebody God loves you. You know. But I know they got their little um Jesus prayed to the Father nearly. Yeah. Um <clears throat> but I know they got their little stipulations on what you can put in your titles, like <clears throat> things pertaining to religion and you know, um uh, sexual things you have to go by the guidelines but one thing about it <clears throat> i don't care what the guidelines is i'm still gonna talk about jesus even if i had to put it in the uh in a text form but yeah i got 11 people in here y'all doing good my life is the way no man my life is the way up your life is the way you planned it okay michelle I believe you said your life is not the way you planned. Hey, Erica Evans, Eric Evans. Uh, y'all, I need some um moderator. Miss Phyllis made me a moderator, baby. I don't even know what I'm doing, but I sure appreciate the opportunity. But I moderate on her channel. Um, can some of y'all moderate? How do I get a moderator? Can y'all help me with the moderation? Because I think I'm gonna be doing live more often. Cause you know sometimes I get a word, and I might not have time to be turning on no camera. And try and make no video. Sometimes, sometimes that need to be said like right then. So, um, Casey Detox, can you moderate for me since you good at this live stuff? <clears throat> and I gotta go back and um see all these folks from when you did your dedication. I got mom. Oh, uh, not that. No, nah, they weren't from your dedication. Who from your dedication? Miss Wheels. TWG, Super Mom Go, Just a Human. I got a lot of them on here. Baby, I got to get busy. But I think what I'm going to do is, I'm trying to just put my videos out so I can go and get monetized so I can start sharing my money with the community. After my first check, I already told y'all I'm going to share with you all. My second check, I'm giving me some lighting. Second, third check, I'm giving me some lighting, some better equipment. My third check, baby, I got to help some folks with my family because I... We got some situations and everything started at home. But I just, I got to get back to y'all because y'all be reading food. But I got some um, family members that need some help. But I'm not going to be helping them on a regular basis to cripple them. I'm going to help them just to show them that um, you helped me today on understand about the 10th of the, yeah, the income, yeah. Oh, yeah, on that tithing, baby. My co-worker, they were coming up with all kinds of reasons. I said, baby, you got to do all that. You ain't ready to tithe. Because, baby, when you get to understand of what tithing really is, it ain't about the money. Try to tip. It ain't about, I used to think that. Everybody worry about what the pastor going to drive. Why y'all want the pastor to drive these raggedy cars and he represent God? I don't understand that. What, the, what kind of car y'all want the pastor to drive? Y'all just tell me that. I, I wait on it. I want to see what kind of car are y'all comfortable with the pastor driving. That way you feel comfortable. Y'all worry about the wrong thing. The tithe don't say pay a tenth of the tithe only if the pastor is driving a regular car. The pastor, the Bible don't say that. It don't say that. All right. Thank you, Marie. I appreciate y'all stopping by. I know all y'all got kids and things. I appreciate y'all taking time out y'all schedule. But I'm just about this tithing, baby. I, I, the purpose of the video was not for you to 
to convince you to tithe. That's something you have to do within yourself. I read you the scripture. He wants you to do it on your own free will. God gives a free will to do everything it is here on earth to do. I'm not trying to convince you. I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says about tithing. If you if you make an excuse, you're coming up with a hundred reasons not to tithe, you ain't ready. You ain't ready. My life has changed since I tied for the right reason. Y'all remember I started tithing for the wrong reason. I was just trying to tie to see if it was true. Unexpected checks in the mail and all that stuff. I did get some unexpected checks that Monday, even though they probably going to come anyway. But, you know, I didn't continue to tie because I my foundation was not right. I didn't start out tithing for the right reason. That's why I didn't continue. That's just like with these channels. If you don't, if your foundation is not right, if, you, if, it's, if you don't have a good foundation, maybe the rest of it is going to crumble. It's just a matter of time. How high you get up. That's just how hard you're going to fall. So I really just creep up. Just leave it. Good foundation. Keep creeping up. Leave it. Leave it. How you ever go? I got it. I ain't got to jump up and have 4 million um, subscribers. Because, baby, get what? If you got 4 million, you already know you finna have some drama somewhere. And everybody ain't receiving what you saying. So however many he have for Miss V, that's what I'm that's what he gonna have for that's what I'm gonna have on this channel. Yes. But I'm not gonna be selling my soul to the devil. You think I did all this hard work to come on YouTube and um mess up? Uh-uh. No. Uh nah. uh I done messed up enough in life. It's time to get some things right. I'm 47 years old. I supposed to be teaching my grandchildren right from wrong. Like I told my granddaughter, I said, I always tell the truth. Don't worry about it if you're going to get in trouble or not. Don't worry about the consequences. Tell the truth. People will, listen to this, y'all. People will always respect you for telling the truth. It don't matter what the truth is. If you told the truth, they're going to always respect you. I promise you. I'm telling you now. Yep. Yep. He did challenge. Yep. In Malachi 3 and 10. Yeah. He said, try me. He sure did. It was in my Bible study. Jesus said, try me. Sure did. I told <laughs> funny story, y'all. I'm telling you, my coworker, she talking, good, yeah, some bold stuff you be saying to God. I said, God, you looking at it the wrong way. I told you you be looking at it the wrong way. I told God, I dare you to send me a good man for me to love and be happily married to. <laughs> That's what I told when I was praying for a hug. I told him, I dare you. I dare you to challenge me so I can prove, my, prove to you that I can treat this man right. That what I was praying. This that was a that was part of the prayer when I was praying for my home. I dad, I said, I dare you, Jesus, send it to me. Send it to me, Lord. Do it. And he did it, baby. Everything I wrote down on paper. I wrote down a cameraman. That's a cameraman I got. I wanted me a God-fearing man. I wasn't talking about no man just go to church. I wasn't talking about that. Uh -uh, God fear. I want somebody that fear God. And when you fear God, you're going to do what thus says the Lord. And you're going to know how to treat everybody, your wife, your children, everybody. When you God fear, I ain't talking about just going to church on no Sunday. Open the Bible up. Don't know half the stuff the pastor talking about. Close the Bible and that's it. Then you go on about your life. No, nah, that's why I don't be. You ain't just got to go. Uh -uh. I, ain't, I ain't just talking about no man to go to church. I want one that had a relationship with God so he can know how to treat walk. Anyway, and if you're going to be the head of my household, I need you to know Jesus. The truth is real, yeah. But anyway, back to my granddaughter. I told her, tell the truth, because she's a, I call her a, a little compulsive liar. I'm one, one of those grandmothers. I am real. I know I know what flaws my grandchildren have. You, I'm not one of them grandmothers. You can come tell me something about my child, and I act like I don't, you know, try to act like my child is the best. No, I already know. You know, so I told her, quit. Just tell the truth. What happened? And I can tell when she lying because she gives too much information. That's how I can tell when she lying. Yeah. So I told her. I came bowling before the throne, baby. And he give me everything. Now, I'm tell y'all something. <laughs> Women, uh, I might have a man here, but let me tell y'all something. I, and I also pray for a compassionate man. I want a compassion. And uh, what's the other word? Not compassion. Uh, what you call it? Affectionate man. I asked for an affectionate man. And baby, when I say affectionate, he's affectionate. Sometimes I be, then I have to think about, oh, that's why I pray for love. So anyway, be careful what you pray for too, because you may think you're ready. See, I thought I was ready for some affection. I wanted the affection, but uh, when God send you some affection, when God send you something, it's going to be right. I'm talking about, he's going to touch you on, care if you in the kitchen cooking. He, and sometimes they be like, Lord, 
The Lord said, uh uh, don't come to me. That's what you have. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm just saying, be careful when you ask for something. Make sure you're ready for it. Not saying, I'm, you know, I appreciate it now, but I'm just saying, I'm just using that affection as an example now. Like this girl, this nurse worked with me. She talked, I want me a, I want me a man got a lot of money. I said, okay. You know me. I'm a realist. I said, that's all you want them to have is just a lot of money. You don't want to be generous with the money. You don't want to give you none of the money. You know, I know that ain't what you said. You said you want a man with a lot of money. So that means the man has the money. You ain't saying about how you want to treat the man to treat you. You ain't saying you wanted the man to be um, generous with the money. You have to be careful what you say. Be careful what you say. I said, you say you just want a man with a lot of money. So that's how... That's what she said, y'all. She said, I want a man with a lot of money. So when I posed that question, she thought about it. I was like, yeah, you got to be careful what you say. You just want a man with a lot of money. Okay, that's all. You ain't saying about how you're going to treat you, how you're going to treat your children. Um, Do we have to believe in God? You ain't saying that. All you care about is some money? Anyway, y'all, I done went all around the world. But anyway, I'm enjoying talking to y'all. I think I'm going to do this little live thing more often. I like this here. Not, especially since I'm sitting up right on the live now. Yep, you just might get it. He sure to give it to you, baby. He'll give it to you. He gave me everything I wrote down on that paper. And I promise you, I had about, whew, about 30 characteristics on that paper. And he gave me everything. And I didn't realize he had given me my husband until we had been married about three years. You know, I had to just take time, just sit back and just relax and medicate. I was like, hmm. Oh, this is everything I asked for. You know, just going through the motion of dating and playing a wedding. You, I ain't really have time to really think about it. But, you know, the good thing about it is, like I was telling my husband, when I prayed for him, I knew God could do it. I just didn't know he would do it. So I thank him for doing it. I knew he could do it. Because I know there's some good men out there, just like there's some good women. And, you know, I met my husband on blackpeoplemeet.com. And so me and my sister were sitting in the kitchen. And, you know, I said, I'm going to try this because one of my coworkers was saying that her um, church member had met a guy online. And then I said, well, Lord, what I'm doing ain't working. I had to pray for him. I said, well, I'm going to try this. I said, because I was thinking, I'm on the computer, and I ain't no bad person. So, you know, I know the um, stigma, you know, people crazy on the, on the internet. I mean, I done met some crazy people, and I didn't meet on the internet. So I said, I'm going to try this, but I'm going to be cautious. But I didn't put my picture up there. So I just filled out my little profile. It asked you, are you looking for a serious relationship, or are you looking for a friendship, or you just want a casual friend, whatever. And I put on there exactly what I was looking for. And he, um, I went through and just clicked some people that I was interested in that fit my profile, that matched my profile. And he sent me his number. And my sister said, you finna call him? I said, yes, ma'am. That's why I got on there. Uh, uh, duh. Or oh, I sent him my number. He called me. You know, that was the purpose of me getting on there. What's the purpose of getting on there if you ain't gonna communicate with the folks? What? So anyway, so that's how I met him. And the best man I never had, the ones I met through a friend or other ways, I mean, I'll let y'all figure that part out. So everybody on the internet is not crazy. You on the internet, are you crazy? So we had to change our thinking sometimes, y'all. Everybody, we pray for a hood. Okay. What, what you think? You're gonna knock on the door. Um, God sent me. I'm gonna be your husband in 10 years. You what you think they're gonna knock on your door? What? Just have you fill out an application, you pray for a job. You ain't fill out no application, but you want God to help you get a job. You ain't fill out nobody application, don't nobody even know you exist. They ain't got no social security number, no net. You ain't did no work. It's that faith without works is what? Dead. So, can we open the doors of the church, y'all? Here go my offer, Trey. Would there be one? I'm just saying, y'all. Look at I just don't understand something. I ain't saying talk to every man that say hey to you. I'm just saying you got to be open-minded. Had I not been open-minded, I would not be happily married to this day. And when I say happily married, happily married does not mean we don't have disagreement. Happily married does not say we don't say stuff to hurt each other's feelings. Happily married does not mean that um we got it all together. Happily married, my happily married means I'm with somebody that I choose to be with. I feel that God blessed me with this man, and I want to be with him. I like him, and I love him. That's what happily married means. Happily married don't mean we just didn't have a fight a few minutes ago. 
<laughs> Do you want that man to come by there? Baby, happily married does not mean that we got it all together. Happily married just means you actually want to be with the person. And when a problem arises, it means that you care enough about the person and you care enough about the relationship to try to work the problem out. If it's something that you can do on your end, you try to work it out. Like I told my husband, he, he telling me different stuff. You need to work on this. You need to work on that. Okay, I worked on the stuff with, that was like deal breakers. But then at the same time, I told him, um, let me tell you something, sir. Um, please don't ask me to work on anything else because if I keep working on all these things, I won't even be who I am. Who did you fall in love with? I'm not going to work on everything just to make you comfortable. You're going to have to accept some things just like I accept a lot of things you got going on. And he finally realized, don't ask me to work on nothing else. Now, the deal breaker, the stuff that, like in the first couple of years of marriage, I worked on. And I stopped doing whatever it is that really made you uncomfortable. You ain't, I told you, you're getting a little too comfortable with this talking about work on stuff. I said, what you do is, as you pray, you ask the Lord to help you to understand me more. And I'm going to do the same thing. And when God gets ready to change each and every, both of us, he'll change us. I said, I'm not going to keep changing just because you're uncomfortable with something. I had to tell him that about a year ago. And when I told him that, he understand. I'm talking about to look at the truck. What truck, good? Oh, is he going to come back here? We trying to get our transmission fixed, y'all. Then my sister Nick, though, she need transmission. I need transmission. So we we finna try to get two transmissions. Say without words and dead. Yeah, hey, um, Liz, my beautiful friend, mm -hmm, all the way from California. Did you get that kiss? Mm -hmm. Don't tell my husband I sent no kiss that far. He going to be mad because he would love his wife, baby. But anyway, like I told my husband, I'm not going to keep changing everything. I love you and everything. I want our marriage to work and it's going to work. But at some point, you're going to quit asking me to work on stuff every every time something uncomfortable. Baby, you need to work on that. Okay, I know I got an anger problem. I'm working on it. God working on it. I already asked for, I pray for a calm spirit. Until he gives me the calm spirit, then unless I just do something that just foul, I need you to relax and just understand that it's a work in progress. You fell in love with my flaws. And my you when you fall in love with a person, you fall in love with their strengths and their weaknesses. I'm kissing a woman, y'all don't don't y'all start no mess. God said love everybody. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So when when I had that talk with him and then he started realizing stuff, what he did was he did some and he realized and, and he saw the reaction that I gave him and he realized that. I really could have reacted another way, but I did. So I'm, I'm accepting your flaws. So I need you to do the same thing. So y'all, just um, flaws one-on-one -on -one right there. Accept people for who they are. You fell in love with them with them flaws. Let God work on people. It's a process, baby. Y'all just want everybody to be perfect. Ta-da, but you ain't perfect. What? Come on now. Come on. Who be saying that? Oh, Sanal, beautiful gems. Come on. And on brown eyes on a budget. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, I enjoyed talking to y'all. But um, I'm going to try to see see if I can get my uh, transmission worked on. And our little Tahoe, y'all remember I said we need another vehicle. Because me and my husband both of us go out there at 5 o'clock in the morning. One of our cars can't crank. We don't, we don't need to be calling in for work. We need to be going to work because we're trying to get this debt paid off. So I want to have a car to just jump in and then we check on that later. Holy Spirit Jr. <laughs> I know, right? Like they perfect. Yeah, let him do the work. Do what I told him, and he understood. Yeah, and God fixed it. Where he had a situation where I sh I had to show him some compassion, and right, and that's what fixed it. I just told Lord, you fix it. Cause well, if I fix it, like my pastor said, if I try to fix it, you still gotta come and fix it. So y'all let God fix this stuff. We gotta quit trying to. We gotta quit trying to fix everything, baby. We ain't no therapist. We ain't no mechanic. Well, y'all might be. But I'm just saying in general. You ain't no therapist. You ain't no mechanic. You ain't no hard regulator. Let God do his work. Let God do what he's supposed to do. You can't fix everything like something going on with my chair. Now, okay, Lord, you fix it. I can't do nothing else. Ain't nothing I can do. I'm not messing with this no more. I'm going to pray and keep going. That's what I'm going to do. Because he's still going to have to come in and fix it. Because we're going to mess it up. So, yeah. That's what's going on with me, V. But I'm enjoying YouTube. It's some beautiful um, content out there. And I really appreciate it. I really do. I really appreciate the ones of you all who are content creators that, that are real. Yeah. 
And I appreciate y'all watching my video, Miss V with this Southern accent, mispronouncing words, using it in the wrong context. Just bear with me, baby. The Lord working on me. He working on me. He gonna get better. <laughs> but y'all, yeah. but God know he good. Woo! I was thinking on, I was sitting, thinking the other day about some, just how good he is. Just, it's just a blessing just to get up and move your fingers. To move your head from side to side. Even though you got a headache. Like my pal said, so what you got a headache? You do everything else when you got a headache. Praise him when you got a headache. We do everything else when we got a headache. We still go to the grocery store. We still go pay our bill. We still go on a date with our husband when we got a headache. Okay. Still pray to God when you got a headache. So what your leg hurt? Thank God you can feel the pain. You know. It's all about how you think of Because some people don't even have a feeling. You know. So we have to be thankful for it all. Like the one guy in the in the emergency room, he said, I said, hey, how you doing? Oh, son, you go good with praise in here. Did y'all put anything in my offering? Did my offering tray here. <laughs> this comedian, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, what's the comedian name? I can't even think of his name. Uh, what's the comedian? Y'all, what's the comedian name? Not, um, a black guy, Ed Griffin. Ed Griffin so low down. He said, I've been wanting to go to church, but I ain't saved up with no money. <laughs> I said, Woo, boy, these folks crazy. In other words, he said, that's all they do is ask for money. You know, a lot of them do ask for a lot of money, but thank God, baby, I pay my tithes. And if the Holy Spirit don't convict me to do that extra, it don't bother me. Like one of my friends, he said, all they do is ask for money. I said, well, you just give what you're going to give. Don't worry about them asking for money. They can't make you give it. So that don't bother me. I don't go to church for the people. I go to church for praise and worship. I don't be worried about them people. Even the folks in the pulpit, if they doing something they ain't got no business to do, guess what? They're going to have to give an account of it. They're going to have to give an account of it. I'm going for praise and worship. I don't worry about the people around me. Like they say, you do everything else? Okay, people say, okay, let's go. Let's let's get on the subject. They say they don't go to church because everybody in the church, you know, corrupt or whatever. Okay, right. There's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in the church now. I mean, VA naive. Okay, but I go to church for praise and worship. Well, I can praise him anyway, but I go for worship. Well, I'm still saying I'm going to, I go to church for praise and worship. Because he said for Satan, not assembling of believers. Okay, so I go to church for that. Okay, so they say they don't go to church because people do wrong or whatever. The, the deacon sleeping with the preacher wife or who though. Okay. Uh, what they got to do to Praising God. When you go before God, they ain't gonna ask you nothing about the deacon. They ain't gonna ask you nothing about the um uh, the pastor wife. He ain't gonna ask you nothing about that. All you want him to say, "Well done, my good and faithful servant." That's all you want him to say. You can't worry about the other people. Okay, that the case. Okay, so you don't go to church because of what everybody doing in church. Think about this. Okay, so I'm sure if you work outside your home, you got some low down people at your job. I bet you still go to work. I'm through with it. Those are the churches over. I bet you still go to work. So why you go to work? Because you go to work to make your money. You go to church for praise and worship. I go to church for praise and worship. I don't go to church because everybody in the church is all right or doing right. As long as I know I'm trying to do right. Me. Me. I used to think like that. But like I said, as you develop a relationship with God, some things going to change. Do I still do wrong? Yeah. I'm a sinner. I'm still a sinner. That's saved by grace, baby. That's why we get renewed grace every day. The grace I had yesterday, I'm not working off that grace. I'm on a new grace. That's why he has to give us a new grace every day because we sinners, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to tell y'all what I understand. Now, if you ain't comfortable going to church, then that's fine. But don't say you don't go to church because of what the other people are doing. That's all I'm saying. If you're not comfortable going to church, then you don't go to church. If you're not comfortable going to church, if you're not comfortable in that place. Miss V ain't just trying to throw you into the church, but I'm just saying, let's keep it real. Why are you not going to church? You can't worry about the other people. If people in your family do wrong, you still go to the family um, reunion? If people at Walmart right now, low down, but you still going to go to aisle 12 and get them cinema rolls. Because that's your purpose. Your pur What's your purpose? What's your purpose, baby? I don't worry about it. they can stand up there and there for a million dollars. 
If once I gave my ten percent or whatever, I'm gonna give. If I decide I want to give a little bit more off, I'm gonna give it. It don't bother me. They just stand up there and talk to they blue in the face. They ain't gonna stop me from going to church or they begging for money. Just let them beg. I'm just saying. I, I just want folks to be real about why you stop going to church. Just, just be real. It, it can't be because of what other folks doing. What they got to do with you? That that shouldn't have nothing to do with you. What other people doing? You can only control what you do. You better sur sur the surrender prayer says, grant me the surrender to accept the things I cannot change. You cannot change who them folks sleep with. The courage to change the things I can, the courage to go on to church, and the wisdom to know the difference. That That's what it's saying. So you going to go to God and say, no, I didn't go to church. Because sister such and so was sleeping with brother such and such. God going to be like, I knew that. But what they got to do with you? Doing what I told you to do. <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all, I be, I be thinking, me be thinking, so I don't know. Just say you don't. Just, I, I would appreciate it more if people just say, I don't go to church because I don't want to. They will make more sense to me. So if you find out your 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 supervisor sleeping with the CEO of the company, you gonna quit your job? What they gotta do with you? You just don't sleep with the CEO. You you just you just try to do right. <laughs> I'm just saying. I be thinking. I be thinking because I be thinking sometimes, y'all. I just ran and ran. Y'all, I'm gonna talk to y'all to um to get dog out here till the light go away. Cause I've been thinking. Like, let's get out of the surgery. I'm gonna go to something else. Cause. You know, if y'all don't want to go to church, you ain't got to go to church. Because I had a point where I had I didn't go to church. So I be thinking like the coffee cup. Why is it called a coffee cup? Can I drink tea out of it? <laughs> I'm just saying, y'all. I just be thinking. We account for our own soul. No, yeah. <sighs> mm -mm. I just be thinking. Okay, about the coffee cup, y'all. Can I drink tea out of a coffee cup? Why is it called a coffee cup? I just want to know. <laughs> We've been thinking. But yeah, back to that young man at my job. He be looking for me, y'all. He's searching for the truth. But the, the Lord, he gonna give me something to give him. He gonna give me something again right when it's time to give it to him, cause he be wanting. He be telling me, "You been looking for me now? Why would I look for you, young man? Why would I be looking for you? He ain't got nothing else to say to me." I be saying, "Uh, no. How you doing today? Looking, looking for you for what? <sighs> well, yeah, I can get y'all. I got some testimonies, baby. God is good." That ain't no cliche when I say it. I be for real. God is good. I got six people still in the stream. Y'all doing good. I've been on here an hour and 18 minutes. But I didn't I didn't cover some good content, y'all. But yeah, it's good to um study the Bible and get an understanding for yourself. Cause I used to go to church and I'd be like, I don't know nothing that man I'm talking about. That's when I was just in the world, you know, just going to church because it was Sunday. Any of y'all been there? What been there? Just going to church because it was Sunday. Then go right back to doing the same thing you were doing after church. Didn't try to do better. Didn't try to change nothing. I done been there. That's why I understand when people um are not in the same place. I mean, you know, spiritually. We all in different spots as far as spirituality. So anyway. I'm going to go and get off here because um, hopefully my sister on her way home so we can go get these transmission look at. Yeah, I used to go just to be going to Miss my girl's age. Yep. But the Bible even talks about growing spiritually. Can, you know that scripture? I'm sure you do. It says um, when you when you was a child, you speak as a child. When you, when you got grown... You put away them childish things. You have to do that too, as far as the spirit too. Cause the funny story, y'all. Let me tell y'all. I didn't get on let y'all go. Me and my girlfriend. <laughs> Speaking of growing up spiritually, me and my girlfriend went out to lunch, 
<clears throat> and we were saying our grace. Yeah, it's a different. Uh, and we were saying our grace. And she said the grace. Now, we <laughs> we about 30 some years old, did you not? At, at this time. She saying the grace that we said we when we learned as a child. We're sitting in the restaurant now. She up there. God is great. God is good. Let them thank him for our food. By here, we must be fed. Give a lot our daily bread. Amen. I, holla. I said, uh, excuse me. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> she said. She said, that's all the prayer I know. I said, oh, okay, well, that's all the prayer you know then. Okay, you thank God for your food. I was like, what happened? Lord, thank you for the food I'm about to receive. Please let it be used for the, body, the nourishing of my body that it may bring no harm to me in the name of Jesus. She said, God is great. God is good. Let them thank you for our food. Buy it here. We must be fed. Give us, Lord, our daily. I said, okay, well, I mean, that's still. But it was just funny to me. I was on tickle. I'm talking she up there to deal hands like this and everything, y'all. In a restaurant. <laughs> but then they go show you what she just did what she knew, which was good, which was fine. But I was just saying it for the maturity. You know, I would have thought at 30 something, you know, we ain't still doing this, which ain't nothing wrong with it. But you know, I'm just saying I'm, I'm expecting my little grandbaby to do that. But I was so tickle. I said, okay. <laughs> But anyway, I'm going to let y'all go out and enjoy talking to y'all. I appreciate each and every last one of y'all that came by my stream because I know everybody's busy. Everybody got jobs, got children, got grandchildren. People have to cook. So I appreciate that, y'all. <laughs> oh, yep. But anyway, thank you. Thank you to everybody who came by my stream. Hopefully y'all um, saw something in the Dollar Tree Hall that interests you all. And stay tuned for some DIYs. And the next time, maybe I'll be upright when I do. Uh-oh, uh look at my sister. We'll go check on this. Um, Let this man look at my um, tie hole. See if he can get me a transmission. God loves you and so does Miss V, y'all. Have a good night.